Welcome to The Connecting Point. The Christmas story has a power to it that is more beautiful than songs can contain. It's more beautiful than poetry can wrap its arms around. It's, it's deeper than we can imagine, and it's more beautiful than any movie or story that could ever be made or told. Yet I find it universal that we all get so excited about Christmas time because we see the beauty outwardly. We know it's there beneath the surface all the time. We know that Jesus is there. We know that God is there. It just seems like the rest of the year it's below the surface somehow. But at Christmas time, even the cynics begin to smile. Even the Grinches get told uh, their due, right? Even, even the little Grinchiest, bah humbuggiest of us all get pulled out into the open. And we, it, it's revealed in us that there is a Christmas spirit around us all. There's a beauty about Christmas that comes not because it's a holiday, not because we spend a lot of money, or just because we get to, um, I mean, some of us probably eat a little more than we should. I mean, I, I don't know anyone, I'm just saying I've heard. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you got the notice you're supposed to set your scales back 10 pounds, but if you forgot to do that, you probably should do that. Um, but it's not just about that. It's because... The Bible teaches us that the power of God is real, and it's palpable, it's touchable. And it's in our world and around our world, and it surrounds us daily. And there are times when we ignore it and we push it away from us, but even in pushing it aside, we're touching it. Even in ignoring it, we're not ignoring it, right? We're not ignoring it, we're seeing it, even when we're trying to hide from it. Even when we try to take our heart and, and, and hide it away and say, I'm not going to let it get to me, it does. If you were able to sit here and not enjoy the power of this music, then I'm talking to you. If you were able to look at these kids and not go, okay, all right, that's pretty cute. <laughs> then you have issues. Welcome. <laughs> You're among friends, fellow inmates in the psych ward. We're all here, but, <laughs> but I want to make sure you know that if this isn't touching you, if the power of this music and the power of the singing isn't reaching you, if it's just ho-hum lyrics and songs you've heard a thousand times, then you have issues. I'm so excited to introduce you today to the issue solver. The one who can make your heart grow three times larger than it ever could otherwise. Amen? Amen? The one who can teach you why Christmas time is beautiful, even for people who proclaim themselves as atheists. Even for folks who believe themselves to be agnostic, they find themselves staring at a Christmas tree and wondering what it's really all about. Now, I'm from the South, I'm from Atlanta, and I had some friends here who were from other countries just this week, and it was fun to talk to them because where they're from, they don't see trees all the time. And I don't know if you travel a lot, but if you don't travel a lot, let me tell you something about Atlanta, Georgia. When you come home, you realize we have a lot of trees. Ah, I love it. New York City, you go up three stories in any place. Unless you can see Central Park, you couldn't find something green unless it was old. I love New York, it's great, but man, it is not tree, tree central. I love Chicago. Chicago's a great town. I love to hang out in Chicago. You go up three floors in Chicago, you look out of any building, and all you see is more buildings. Unless you can see the river, you pretty much can't see anything else. But if you go up three stories anywhere in Atlanta, Georgia, and you look out, it looks like there's no city. It's only trees. There's something about green that reminds us of that. And when we look at Christmas trees in the winter when all the other leaves have fallen off, the evergreens shine out. And the truth is this, and I want you to listen carefully. Those green trees that are still green right now were green all year round. But we didn't notice. We just didn't see them. Because there were so many other green things to look at. 
And this is what the world is trying to do. The world is trying to create so much noise in your heart and so much noise in your, in your eyes and your vision and your life and try and have given you so many confusing messages that the real true message, the evergreen, the true evergreen message is lost. But in those moments when the leaves fall and the dark and the bleak winter sets in, those evergreen trees will still be there. You're going to come to those winter moments in your life. You're going to come to the autumn of your, of your days. And when all the other things of this world have faded and fallen and wasted and ruined, what will you have that remains? Today we're singing about and showing the story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And maybe today somehow you've missed the message. So let me make it abundantly plain. You need Jesus. You don't need Jesus because you're any more awful than anyone else. You need Jesus because you're just as awful as everyone else. You don't need Jesus because you're some wicked, awful sinner unlike anybody else. You need Jesus because we're all wicked, awful sinners without him. You don't need Jesus because I need you to join a church. You don't need Jesus because of religion and fake smiles. You need Jesus because the leaves are going to fall. You need Jesus because the winter is coming. You need Jesus because there's going to be a time in your life when all hope is lost and it's completely abandoned and there's no one standing with you and there's no one to help you. And in that moment, in that time, the evergreen will be standing with you. Jesus, who was there the whole time, may be unnoticed, standing with you. I pray that when you see a Christmas tree, you're reminded why we bring trees inside. I grew up as a little kid and my mom spent her whole life trying to keep me to leave stuff outside. <laughs> One time a year, I got to make a gigantic a mess in our house and drag stuff into the house. Why? Because in our winter, we need a reminder that spring is coming. The seasons are God's very not-so-subtle plan. People always tell me, you know, God works in mysterious ways. I'm going to be honest with you. I think God shouts it from the mountaintops. I think God is so loud and so vibrant and so powerful and so amazing that essentially I'm going to accuse you of being totally clueless if you miss it. The seasons change, even in Georgia, where we go from ridiculously hot, which should remind us of why we want Jesus in our life, because we don't want to die and spend eternity south of the Nat line. <laughs> don't encourage me. <laughs> Amen? Summers in Georgia, especially South Georgia, remind us why we do not want to spend eternity separated from God in hell. I can tell you that right now. Amen? And even though what we might call winter in Georgia is just as a breeze, it still reminds us when we go, don't I own a jacket? Yeah, I think I have one. Let me see if I can find it. And you pull it out and there's still a flyer from last year's Christmas program in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that one day we wore it, Right? There are seasons. And I'll tell you something about our South. When the spring comes, man, it is awesome. Even grumpy frumpies love the springtime. Even people like me who, who wear their winter coat all the time. <laughs> and love the warm, the, 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 uh, sorry, love the cold weather and, and fear the warm weather coming in. I love spring. You can't help but feel good. I want to tell you that I need you to fear the winter. I need you to recognize that your limit will be reached. Your strength and your power will be overcome. There will be a time when you, like an acorn on a tree, will have to fall. You will feel hopeless and helpless and you will fall. I need you to fear it. Because if you don't fear it, you don't respect it. And if you don't respect it, you're going to miss the greatest gift that was ever given. Those acorns fall. And they are hard. Some of you who have, who have trees 
in your driveway, you hear them hit your roof. And some of you, if you're like me, if you park in the driveway, when you back out, you can hear them all rolling off your roof, and you know they're there. And those things, those acorns, they go and they die. It seems so somber that these future trees have to die. But there is hope in God's not-so-subtle picture of nature. Because those little acorns, when they die, they can finally bring new life. They can finally grow to be a mighty tree that can give shade and shelter to others, that can grow acorns itself and spread those out even further. I want you to know the message of Jesus Christ, the message of Christmas. is not just that Jesus was born, but that he was born to die for you. And even though we sometimes focus only on the manger, I want to make sure that from the manger, Christ's eyes saw the cross. Jesus said, I am come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why I'm here. And so he marched that road all the way to Calvary. And for me, Christmas is Easter. And Easter is Christmas because it is all the gospel. And today I want to make sure that when you look out at your world, and, and maybe right now things are springy outside. Maybe the leaves are green and it's great. But I want to warn you. Embrace the true and the eternal. Embrace the evergreen. Embrace Christ today. Because when that winter comes, it will be too late. I just want to invite you today to stop and recognize that Jesus has been there for every moment of your life. And no matter what you go through, no matter what you've done, no matter who you've been or who you are right now, he loves you so unconditionally that our human minds cannot contain it. Poets and songwriters have tried for thousands of years to express it, and they cannot exhaust the well of the love of Jesus Christ because it is too deep to ever fathom. I want you to know it purity of forgiveness, the strength and the power and the joy that comes from knowing Christ. And all you have to do is recognize that our sin separates us from God. I know that sin is an ugly word and it's not very popular to talk about. And some of you right now just got all itchy. I can't believe he said the sin word. And if you got all itchy, then I'm specially talking to you. Because sin is a problem you cannot ignore. It's like pretending winter is never going to come. Judgment day is coming. But you needn't fear that. Because I know the judge. Amen? And I want to introduce you to him today. I want you to meet him and to know him. Wouldn't it be awesome to walk into that judgment room? And up there is the judge and he said, Hey, how you been? rather than saying, who are you? We don't like sin. Um, I don't want to ruin the whole suspense of it, but let me explain why we don't like sin. Because you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to like people talking about sin because it reminds you that we do commit sin. We don't like people talking about it because it reminds us that we're imperfect and that by ourselves we are trees falling in the forest every day. who we are. Leaves falling every day. It's our sin. Sin is the sign that we're dying. Men aren't very good at this. We have a pain in our knee and we think that the pain exists so we can torture our family by complaining about how much our knee hurts for the next six months. But God has given us a mother or a wife or a daughter in our life to say, hey, hey, why don't you go to the doctor? That's what that means. You see, it's a sign to remind you. Pain is a reminder that something isn't right. Very few of us like pain. But it reminds us that something is wrong and we can fix it. Amen? You may not like sin. In fact, I hope you don't. And you may not like me talking about it, but it's too late. I've done done it. So now all we need to do is solve it. Our sin separates us from Christ. 
it removes us. It endangers us of winter being the last of our life. And there are going to be many trees that fall during the winter and die and are burned. But God has promised that if we'll surrender to him, if we'll acknowledge that he is Lord God, creator of everything, if we will recognize that there's no hope in this world other than through him, and we will surrender our hearts and our lives to him, then we can die. But when we die, we die like an acorn. And in the spring, we're reborn. When we pass through death's door, that's all it is. We step from this world into the next. Will death come? Yes. But we need not fear it. Because there is rebirth for the people of God. This isn't religious. This isn't about this church building. In fact, if I never ever see you again, it's still true. The gospel is clear. Its clarity and God's love for you are not in question today. The only question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to ignore winter and pretend like if you just hold your hands up and don't look at the trees, you can pretend like it's never, ever going to be winter? Do you think you can hide from the reality of the change of the seasons? You cannot. You can't stop it. Nor can you stop the judgment that's coming to this world. But what you can do is prepare for it. I will stand before God. And I will be judged. I can't change that. What I can change is him being my dad or not. When I stand before him, he'll say, my son, welcome home. By my blood, you are forgiven. And I'm reborn, evergreen, evermore. The question is, just what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with him? He's already died for you. He already surrendered his heart and his life for you. He's already paid the price and the sacrifice to give you freedom. So what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do? I ask you and invite you to respond. As they sing, the altars are open. To just respond. If you're lost and you don't know what's going on, you don't know where to go or how to do it, you are among friends and family today. You just start moving forward and people who love you will come along and help you and pray with you and talk with you and open the word of God with you. Whatever your need today, come forward. Maybe today you just want to pray for a lost loved one. Maybe you want to pray that during this Christmas season you know you're going to see that cousin or that sister or that aunt that you, you know needs Jesus and you want to just come and pray for them. Whatever your need today, Maybe you just want to thank God for being evergreen in your life. Whatever you need, won't you please come as they sing. Thank you for joining us today. We want you to know that you are always welcome at the summit. We are located on Highway 81 south of Loganville. Sunday school is at 9 a.m. and worship is at 10.30 a.m. For more information, you can visit our website at thesummitchurch.com.